fact that there are so many ways to capture and share videos in the world today means that there are now so many different and confusing ways to encode them and convert them just so that they can be viewed by others or even ourselves. So in this video I'm going to show you what you need to know about converting and encoding videos. The first thing I'm going to cover are all the different types of video containers. Video containers are like a box that contains everything the video needs to play, such as video data, audio tracks, DVD chapters, subtitles, and things like that. Most video types are known by their container, and while there's many different types of containers, here are the most popular. AVI was created by Microsoft in 1992, and it can contain most types of video codecs except for the more recent ones, but it doesn't allow for metadata, uh, chapters, subtitles, except when you use it with third-party programs such as VLC. MP4 is the most commonly used video format. It's the fourth compression standard from the MPEG group, uh, which was developed by the International Standards Organization. It can store most any type of video data, including most any type of video format, uh, metadata, chapters, DVD menus, and subtitles. And it can also easily be streamed over the internet. MOV is the container uh, that's owned by Apple's QuickTime department. It was released in 1991, almost a year before Microsoft released their AVI container. And in 2001, both MP4 and MOV uh, began using the same format specifications. If you look inside the video container, you will see all the different types of data that makes the video run. One of those specific types of data being the codex. Codex stands for coder, decoder. And whatever codec you choose will determine the video size, speed, and quality. And while again, while there are tons out there, here are the most common types of codecs. The first type is DivX and XVID. DivX is a codec that's created by the DivX Corporation, and XVID, which is DivX spelled backwards, is its freeware competitor. These codecs are preferred for compressing movies for computer playback due to their size quality ratio. Generally being able to compress an entire movie down to about 700 megabytes. Of the two, however, XVID is more preferred not only because it's the only one of the two that can be used in a Unix environment, but also because it has slightly better quality. FFmpeg is the most widely used codec within Linux distributions, but it's also compatible with Mac and Windows. It was mainly created as a culmination of free and open source encoding and decoding libra libraries that are out there. So this makes it kind of a one-stop shop for encoding and decoding pretty much any type of video. X264 is a codec that encodes most videos into H.264, which is the preferred codec when it comes to streaming video due to its quality. This is what YouTube videos are encoded in, so if you're uploading a video to YouTube, using X264 as the format will give you the best results. As far as containers go, the MP4 container is generally known for being able to display X264 the best. Now when it comes to multimedia, a video's bit rate tells you how much data and bits are compressed into one second. So as far as what you need to know, here's a breakdown of the more popular types of bit rates. 256 kilobits a second is the bit rate for streaming videos and video conferencing. 1375 kilobits a second is uh, around what's used for video CDs. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less. Five megabits a second is what's uh, considered DVD quality and what's used in most DVDs. 10 megabits per second is for HD TV and 40 megabits a second is the maximum for Blu-ray videos. So now that you know all about the codecs and containers, how do you use them? Well, there are several different free programs out there that give you these uh, options in converting videos. The first one is called Handbrake, and this is the best when it comes to 
uh, operating on different operating systems because it's available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. Now some other video converting programs, as far as I know, they're only available on Windows, but they're definitely worth mentioning. Uh, one is called Format Factory, which uh, is very simple to use. Another one is called Super, which is uh, uh, has a lot more different options than Format Factory does. And the last one is called Media Coder. So I hope this helps you guys out, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them on my website forum, or just uh, leave them in the comments below. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.